Yes, on the fly, but the title is deliberately ambiguous. How could it be otherwise? In, in essence, a 15 year, 15 year history of Barfly compressed into just six and a half minutes. As its editor for 10 years, the magazine offered a veritable fly by the seat of my pants ride, one that truly fulfilled its mission as a bona fide and free weekly alternative guide to Cairns cultural and social, socio-political scenes. Thank you, Sue. Well, the blurry was hatched in 1990 by two former Melbourne colleagues, Lisa Walton and Susan Frankel who fortuitously reconnected during a sojourn in Cairns and decided that the city was urgently in need of an arts and entertainment guide. And so say all of us. And so on March the 6th, 1990, the first issue of what was to become a local institution hit the streets of Cairns. Its 24 pages included articles on two fashion establishments that endure to this very day, Fetish for Life and Cracker Box Palace, whose proprietor, I believe, is here. 141 issues later, on December the 3rd, 1992, the first incarnation of Barfly sadly hit the wall, following financial difficulties caused largely by an ill-conceived expansion to Townsville, Boo Boo, and beyond. <laughs> Dean Raybould's illustration to Mark World Music Day was the unlikely sentinel. During its uh, watch, Barfly Mark I extended a helping hand to the city's arts officer, Carrie Brees, in her inspired mission to turn smelly oil tanks into the unique art centre which we enjoy here today. The blowing also made space for Brian Cass's photographic artistry, and the bastard's not here tonight, he's elsewhere. <laughs> the magazine's uh, resident rodent, Juan Fernando Ferret, succeeded in ruffling fur and feathers with his biting and irreverent observations. Here, with the help of Dean Raybould's caricatures, he sinks his fangs into two noble or perhaps ignoble professions. No one embraced or espoused for Barfly ethos with more glee than Harry Slee. The gig guy's originator, turn proprietor, salesman and general dog's body literally died on the job, pitching to a client in his final hours in September 2002. He lives on in memory, memory, many memories. Ah, a graphic reminder of a favourite barfly sport, that of firing darts into the flaccid flanks of a local Murdoch cash cow. Tame Raybould's, uh, I think, excellent marker uh, alludes to the compost over the top reaction to the arrival at Holloway's Beach of a rusty hulk containing harmless refugees. More wicked creations from Barfly's artist in residence. On the left, Pauline Hanson giving birth to her love child, Johnny Howard. <laughs> On the right, an even older Johnny is having trouble with his joints. That's Barfly humour for you, see? <laughs> Milestone covers depicting Barfly staff, ugly bastards they were too. On the left, Dean Raybould's 100th edition commemorating Barfly Mark I's February 92 edition. On the right, Brother Kane's 1997 third birthday tribute to Son of Barfly. Maybe a case of where's Wally, or maybe where's even Tony there somewhere. Um, celebratory covers featuring the old blowy in all his bloated birthday glory. On the left, Dean Raybould's March 1991 first edition cover. On the right, Son of Bla Barfly's second birthday bash in July 1996, as depicted, depicted by Kane Raybould. Landmark editions on the left, the first issue of Son of Barfly in June 1994, which ended an 18-month hiatus. On the right, the very last edition of a fly, as it was then known, uh, issue number 771, um, and it's good to see the journal was championing worthy causes right up to its closure in July 2005. Some famous gentlemen uh, on Barfly's covers, the man with the pointy ears you all know, January 92, the pianist in the sailor's cap played a pivotal role in the birth of rock and roll and he was a regular visitor to Jono's Blues Bar in his twilight years. More famous musos, both presented in Cairns uh, courtesy of local company Front Promotions who are here tonight. Uh, Dylan played a memorable concert at the Convention Centre on March the 28th and 2001. How many of you were there? 
The lady in the zebra top, Afro funk queen Angelique Kinjo, performed twice in the early 90s before uh, she emerged uh, to world, world renown. Local icon, of course, no introduction. John O'Johnson, and this is the occasion of his 50th birthday on December the 28th, 1995. The other cover advertises a, a very proud event in the annals of local arts, namely the opening of the Cairns Regional Gallery on July 15th, 1995. A couple of Dean Raybould's most graphic creations. The one on the left celebrates the diverse range of characters to be found at the old Rusty's Bazaar before Dilligan's. <laughs> and the other illustration is Raybould's brilliant comic book take on the Gulf War. You won't find such interesting characters of Rusty's these days, of course. <laughs> <laughs> More Dino specials. The, the one on the left illustrates a satirical article in the 1990 edition that imagines the boot being on the other throttle, as it were. And on the right, the old blurry can be seen in his natural milieu. <laughs> Drunk and bum that he was. A more serious Dean Raybould cover puts the focus on famine in Africa with a graphic illustration and a barely readable inscription, which I'll read for you. Power and money rule the greedy, while famine and disease slaughter the needy. Barfly championed a lot of different causes over the years, and I'm very proud of that. In the early days before economic survival dictated that the front page went to the highest bidder, Barfly featured local artwork on the front. These two crazy creations came from uh, the pen of Coranda-based artist Sue Ryan, who nowadays does sterling work in the Cape York community. Double Mask by one of Kansas' most esteemed artists of the early 90s, Gary Andrews. Incidentally, uh, Andrews was responsible for the um, controversial spoof of Michelangelo's David that caused great offence in the lead-up to the opening of the regional gallery. Who remembers that? Lots of you, no doubt. Gary Andrews, who helped uh, co-found Kick Arts, was also responsible for another 1990 cover, this portrait of rock singer Angry Anderson, which uh, sadly brings my pocket history of Barfly to a close. But look, this presentation is dedicated to the countless contributors that made Barfly such a lively weekly read, especially to the people who dug deep into their pockets to keep this magazine afloat for so long. Catherine Hamilton's down here, she's one of them. Um, and, and all the people who contributed to it, they all deserve your applause, please. Thank you. <laughs>